Hi AJJ members, Sean Foley here at Foley Performance Academy and we're going to discuss on this video weather conditions. So as you can see, we don't really do these videos where we talk about every angle of the golf swing and all that. That would be unfair to you because you all swing different. So going to something generic like left wrist or right wrist or what the shoulder should do, I just don't think is as helpful as the things that I've seen the best pros in the world, what they do is they're prepared for every situation and they understand themselves in that situation. So, weather conditions. How many players out there struggle playing when it's cold? I don't know many who don't. I'm from Toronto in Canada, so when I grew up, our high school season was always in the cold. So we obviously had hand warmers and we had rain gear and we had, we had beanies on, we had all that. So, we were pretty prepared in the cold, all right? But what happens in the cold is obviously the tissue in the body is colder, the ball is colder, the equipment overall is being affected by cold. So I'm going to lose distance in the cold. I need to know how much that is, all right? So I can use a track man, I can use any type of, of ball monitor to tell me. So what I would do is I would go out at 51 degrees or 40 degrees in the morning and go through my whole bag and hit balls and find out how much shorter is the ball going, okay? Then I could do it at 50, and I could do it at 60. Then I come down here to where it's really hot, and I could do it at 80, 90, and 100. So I've seen guys at Pebble Beach tee off on a cold Thursday morning at 7 a.m., and they hit 7 iron 175, and the ball's going literally 150. And then the next day, I've seen them tee off on a warm day at one o'clock, and now they're getting back to their normal number of 75, 80. So how many bogeys are made with them just not realizing? Sure, the ball comes up in the front bunker, it looks like a bad swing, but it's just a poor gauge and understanding of how much is this actually affecting me. That is the difference between the people who are super successful and the ones who aren't. It doesn't come down to talent or some given gift, which I don't really agree with. It comes down to one's awareness of what happens in different environments. Cold and hot were both affected by dehydration. Obviously in the heat because the body's got to work harder to cool us down and we're going to go through more energy and doing so we're going to go through more water. A lot of people get high dehydrated in the cold because it's so cold out and you're on the golf course you don't really feel like that you're, that you're as thirsty as when it's hot but the fact of the matter is the, the body still it needs roughly the same amount of water. Obviously when it's hot, a little bit more because you're sweating, but it's not as different as you would think. And then rain. So one thing I know is I always hear players complain about what it feels like to hit balls or to be on the course with all their rain gear on. And then I ask them, have you ever practiced in rain gear? And they say, no. So the fact is, if it is pouring down rain and you're in an area where the water is not going to really go away. If you're on a sand base, you're going to have to keep playing in the rain. Obviously, in your schedules at the AJJ, you guys are trying to fit your tournaments in between school, life, and everything else. So, delays are a little bit different. You're going to have a delay, but they're going to get you back out there at some point. You'll be there all day. So, why would I not practice in my rain gear when I am guaranteed to be in my rain gear? So, what I would notice in my rain gear is that when, I, when, it's, when it's raining out and I'm in my rain gear, I have to make sure that I kind of unweight my front foot a little bit more to make sure that I can complete my arc in my backswing. I also feel as well when I'm in rain gear that I have to allow my eyes and my neck to move a little bit more so I can still make the same size of a golf swing, which is where all my timing is related. So what I see with a lot of people and players is when they put rain gear on, it takes them two or three holes before they realize, oh, I need to do this or that, and unfortunately, they're two over on those holes. And because it's been raining, it's not about to get easier. So, practice in your rain gear. Once again, use a track man, use a laser, use a bush nail, use any device to see when I'm fully in my rain gear with my sweater on, how far am I hitting it? The other thing to do is we saw Phil Mickelson do it this week. Uh, Justin Rose, one of my players, warmed up on the Saturday round because we thought it was gonna rain all day in two gloves as well. And what he noticed when he was wearing two gloves, 
is he couldn't feel where the club head was. So all of his feelings, as far as what we talked about in Picasso before, he felt in order to generate good shots, the feelings had to be more in his body than in his hands because he just couldn't even figure out where the golf club was with both gloves on. So that's an awareness. We didn't want to use them. He was hoping not to use them. Phil Mickelson was using two gloves, practices with two gloves. So it's all those types of things. It's like from good weight rain gear to good golf gloves, that's half the battle. From having enough towels to then obviously having an umbrella, is that's all gonna help me in this. No one really wants to play golf in the rain, let's be honest, right? But these are all the things that I need to do. So when it's raining, go play in the rain and figure out how it affects how the ball lands first. Does it skip? Does the ball go as far in the air? How much does affect does water on the club face and water on the ball have? Train in a way that you intend to play. And then wind, obviously, as the last point, as we've been through cold, hot, rain, and wind, in the wind, there's definitely a way that if you work at it, you can start to understand what does 10 miles an hour into? How much does that affect the distance of my 8-iron, my 7-iron, my 6-iron, my 5-iron, my driver? Downwind, 10. Into 20, downwind 20. Into 30, downwind 30. And really get a good idea of what's happening to the distance your ball's going. Because I can't remember the last time I was actually at a golf tournament where it wasn't windy to some extent. And sometimes as high as 25 or 30 miles an hour. The really, really good ball strikers are the ones who understand that this club is gonna make it. What I see with the kids, especially the boys in the AJGA, is they all think they're about one club longer than they are in actual fact. So once they start getting into different winds, it starts to get really poor. And then the problem is, they diagnose the poor performance as that they weren't swinging well. But their intention and choice to pick the right club wasn't helping it anyway. So remember, in the wind, guys, all right? It's not so much just, it's not so much that it affects spin. When you increase airflow going against the direction your shot's going in, one, the ball's losing momentum faster because it's going against more air. And two, because there's dimples on the golf ball, air gets trapped in the dimple and that's what creates lift. So if anything into the wind, what it's doing is it's creating more lift. As I increase airflow here, the ball is climbing more, it's not spinning more, it's a function of lift. And ideally, is the longer the ball's in the air, the longer it's obviously affected by the wind and for longer. So start understanding when you get into the wind, sometimes it's a lot more club than you think that it is. And the tendency is to take maybe one club more and then hit it harder, which then when I increase velocity, I also increase lift and I increase spin loft and then the ball goes shorter. So you as great players need to do a really good job of understanding how all of these affect how you play because at any time of the year you could be affected by all of them. So that's the key, right? The more prepared you are, the higher your probability uh, is for success. We're not talking about swinging it perfectly. That's not gonna ever be accomplished by a human being ever. But it's knowing these intricacies that will allow you to either gain or lose more strokes in these scenarios.